Huh? I didn't set the recording. <laughs> Just playing it. Playing it over the board against the computer because it does look different playing over the board. Um, so I've just set the recording, hopefully, fingers crossed, everything should be okay. I'm hoping the opponent's going to have some patience with me. So the main idea is preparing for the over the board tournament. It's in about four weeks time, five weeks time. So I need to get used to the seeing the pieces, the feel of the pieces. And then basically just the look of the actual board itself because it does look totally different to playing online. So we're gonna stick with the basic principles. This is what we would do playing over the board, just nice and simple. And you do see things differently when you're playing over the board. This is probably why, you know, even like the higher level players I mentioned before, when you see their over the board games, they are a little bit different to the way that they play online. I think online maybe they just take a little bit more risks and stuff so they, they're a little bit fancier whereas over the board it, they do look different uh, no matter whose game it is they do look different So it's looking like they're wanting to take the time as well, which is good because we have met the ones that just go speedy speed and if you take your time then they just um, leave the game and that's not how we want to practice, we want to practice it's, um, we've got a bit of a heat wave going so if you can hear the fan in the background then it's just trying to cool us down I know they say don't use your fans and stuff like that but hey <laughs> I've closed the curtains, that's good enough for me We've got the window open. I know they say you should shut your window as well, but you've got to breathe. Okay, so they're in a deep think. Okay, so the bishop's out. That seems pretty straightforward. Obviously, king safety is key for me. Let's just castle. So what are we entertaining here at this moment? Obviously you can't speak in an over the board game, so <laughs> that's probably something I need to probably knock on the head, but it's educational for myself. And then I can do the self talk. So it's, they're definitely coming out with ordinary looking moves at the minute, which is good for us. all about placement of pieces could go with the h3 putting pressure onto the bishop see what he wants to do um, I'm really more interested in developing my pieces so I'm gonna get my bishop out it's touch move as well so if I move touch a piece I have to move it so we'll go here just make sure I do the make this right move actually on the computer as well though So it all looks quite basic at the moment, no major tactics. One key thing is they haven't castled yet, so I think the next move is probably the e-pawn is going to be moving to make space for the bishop, unless of course he's fearing Chetowin. Yep, yeah, as we said, 
so it's making space for the push it and last piece this is nothing actually being attacked I could bring my knight out d2 just defending my knight and then at least I've got my pieces out we've still got the x-ray through to his king do we are we gonna lose tempo let's have a look take the knight on c brings his pawn in so we're removing a piece off the ball because at the minute what we're doing is the mistake to take well we're capturing when absolutely necessary and it might be a little bit too arty i think pieces need to be taken off the board we still do have this diagonal through to their king so in essence that's okay to stay there for now still have the x-ray through to the queen so it's okay to stay there for now the bishop's going to come through and defend i think i just de developed the knight do i go old school basic here or do i actually defend my knight with my knight i didn't used to like that move because it sort of like blocked off my queen i'm going to bring the knight through and defend at least it's developing a piece So obviously the basic bishop is coming out now to defend the knight. So that's all pretty straightforward. Do we then go for the basic h3 putting pressure onto their bishop? It's probably, probably the case. And then when they go and castle then we just take the knight off the board maybe. Ah, this is definitely like one of those long pauses that we mentioned in one of the previous videos again it just smacks off that guy who just took about five minutes to make a move and he actually won the tournament i think it's probably because he just sent everybody to sleep but no he was coming out with some dynamic moves and there were so basic moves as well Yeah, this move was always coming out, so realistically, I don't really know why that took so long to be taken, um, to be actioned. So h3 looks good because we're attacking the bishop. King's going ready for his old castling. Uh, is there anything else? Still has the pin on our queen. Could we change that up and just move the queen off of the line? Hmm, there's no point in sitting the queen there though because the bishop's just going to come there at some point, isn't it? Okay. Don't overthink it, keep it simple. Let's go with h3. So the attempt is to try and give them something to think about whilst they're going to go and castle. I think there's probably two moves that we can do to make them think about something. I've probably missed an opportunity, but... So the bishop's gone back. 
that's fine so one of them is the bishop taking the knight because it's got the check on the king so the pawn takes um, I was thinking of the knight going here but he still has the pin through onto my queen so that's not one of them bishop taking the knight that's another one g4 pushing up onto the bishop daring to open up space around my king do I want to be that dangerous in a long play game mm. I could try and be different just bringing the bishop all the way back to e2 but that goes against the grain because we're allowing the knight to survive I'm actually taking the bishop, the knight, sorry, sticking with what we have been practicing. Which is sticking with what we know and not getting fancy. Okay, right, so the knight's got lovely space here, but we still have the pin on our queen. So this is where g4 probably comes in. If he's brave though, he might do the fancy business of knight taking the pawn, all that sort of stuff. So if we go g4, his knight could take the pawn, bishop takes the pawn, no sorry, pawn takes the knight. And then he does have a combination, bishop taking the bishop, and yeah, that might not work. g4, knight takes g4. If the knight takes the g4, we take the bishop, and then we're on the queen. Queen has to take back, queen takes back. And then we take the knight. And then the bishop takes the pawn. And there's no pawns in front of our king. And then his queen can potentially make its way down. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if I like them apples. Am I going to have to move my queen out of the way? That feels slow again. I really want to give them something to think about. I don't think we win this out. G4. Knight takes the pawn. Bishop takes bishop. Queen takes bishop. Pawn takes knight. Are we a minor piece up after all that? But our king is shot. Hmm. It feels like the thing to do. So the knight's got to bump. Knight takes the pawn, bishop takes the bishop, so we've got a bishop, queen takes the bishop, so they've got bishop back, we take the knight, and the bishop takes the pawn. Yeah, so we'll be a minor piece up, but our king side area will be shot. I'm going for it. I'm daring to go for it. Oh, I'm way down on time, aren't I? 122. Crikey. So I can't say that he's taking a long time. I'm taking ages, aren't I? Hmm. Oh, it's moved the bishop, so he's not actually gone for that yet. So the bishop has moved. Knight can now jump to this square, attacking the bishop and the pawn, but I'm definitely not going to be taking the bishop because this pawn here on h3 is um, damaged. <sighs> I think that's a nice move, knight going here. Knight going to e5. Is it overregging anything? Got a B pawn that's unprotected. Bishop's got the diagonal onto the C. 
queen's looking to come round because this pawn will have no protection on mm, yeah betcha. yeah okay let's go for it make sure it's the right pawn knight So at this moment I am trying to give them some things to think about. I mean, we're again, we're attacking a piece that's undefended. And he's moved the undefended piece, so again, he's not been allowed to castle. So I'm feeling like it's been successful. Um, so that's like, I think, three moves that we've done there, which are preventing the opponent from going castling. We could get his bishop off the board now. Does it come at a price? Because if our knight goes to c6, then we've got like a fork on the bishop and the queen. Knights do hunt the bishops in our mantra. Our queen doesn't have access to the king just yet either. Damn. Knights do hunt the bishops in our mantra. I think I'd be... So we go. We might get a free pawn, but then we take the bishop. Yeah, so I think he's going to take the pawn anyway into because the bishop's going to be protected. So that's how we're going to be a pawn down, down. So they know that we could go here, but they've gone, well, right, okay, I'm going to win a pawn. Yes, you can take my bishop, but I'm going to be a pawn up. Is he going to be allowed to keep that pawn? So we go here. He takes the pawn. We take the bishop. His queen takes the knight. Our knight moves so that we can take this pawn. Is there something that can defend the pawn? Yeah, the queen can come here. So if we move the knight to here, then the queen can't come to here to defend the pawn. Although it can come to here and defend the pawn. Ah. So it can go to there to defend the pawn. Our pawn can push up. Oh, but then he'd take, wouldn't he? Oh, I don't like them apples, do I? Knight. Pawn takes. If the pawn takes, though, our knight can just flash round and take the pawn. And he pushes his centre pawn onto the knight, so our knight's then getting chased around. He's got the centre pawn, so we have to bring the knight back. I think there's method in their madness, but I'm taking the opportunity to prevent them from castling. So I'm going to go knight. I mean, he could just go and castle anyway, because it's not stopping him from castling. It's just giving them things to think about. Because his queen is protecting the bishop. But if he did do that, we'd take the queen off the board. <laughs> hmm. 
queen's moved didn't reckon on anything like that it's actually just protecting the pawn so are we going for the 20 point to them because if we take the bishop then the king has to take so um his king is in the center of the board so he might be one of those players that likes his king not being castled and he's potentially going for a virtual castle i think that's probably what he's going to do knight takes the bishop king takes and then he's eventually going to get his rook out in there and then just push his king down the side is there anything else that we can do to prevent that and also what's his golden shot his queen's targeting the b pawn as well as defending the pawn here just take the bishop first and let's see how the picture lies So we know that's what they're doing with the virtual castling type thing. Hmm. Okay, that's totally different. All that calculation that we did and they didn't even do what we said. What do we keep saying? <laughs> you know, to those out there who believe in like doing the 15 move calculation type things, um, probably might need to knock it on the head a little bit because your opponents don't do what you think they're going to do. Okay, so it does take with the king as we expected now there's options I don't really want to bring the knight here because he's just going to push past so I think this is a moment where we probably need to take the pawn but he's looking at championing his centre pawns here this might also be a case of whipping some pieces off the board so if I take his knight off the board he's now got a check through on his king so in fact I don't really need to rush to take that knight off the board because the bishop is now x-raying through to their king so we could push our c pawn but he's on our b pawn is there any what is my queen doing mm -mm 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 -mm. bringing the knight to here then he drops the pawn i don't think i like them apples Taking the knight off the board. King's not going to want to be in the centre of the board. So he's going to open up. But then it does open some attack on this uh, file. Knight could go here. Onto f3. And then bounce to here. Attacking the bishop. But again we're not really wanting to take the bishop are we? So there's no point doing that. Because if he takes then this rook is now on the, on the pawn. So we might as well just leave that bishop there. So we need to do something about this pawn. Do we just simply bring the rook behind it? Or do we just take this pawn off? I'm really a bit squinchy about taking that pawn off because of his central axis here. Hmm. Oh, ah, it looks like they've resigned. <laughs>